Hey folks, Dr. Star Silver Screen Medical Center. I'm going to take another five minutes and answer another question of the day. Continuation of calorie-dense foods. We're only going to take five minutes, so this will be quick and easy. Um, calorie-dense foods, you know, a part of what we were talking about last time is understanding the differences between which foods are very rich in calories and which are not. Now, I, it doesn't take a food scientist to realize that, you know, cheese and bacon and meats and Donuts and uh, cheesy French fries are very calorie dense. That that we realize, um, and it also happens to be one of the reasons that it tastes very good. Um, you know, humans are programmed uh, to to eat foods which not just taste good, but that they can store as energy. Um, we actually did evolve from not eating high fatty foods that didn't come along very often. We didn't have supermarkets and fast food chain restaurants at every single corner. Um, occasionally we were able to eat a high fatty meal or maybe we were lucky enough to come across a, a tree full of nuts and we ate as much as we could to save up on it. But the actual day-to-day -day, uh, paleolithic and evolutionary process we ate the low-hanging fruits quite literally. You know, you come across an orchard of, uh, you know, fruit and you can eat like a king or a queen. You come across a wheat field and you're going to starve. You can't eat that food. It has to be processed. It has to be, you know, uh, it has to be, well, it has to be processed basically. And you don't always have that time. So fruits and vegetables for sure uh, were the main staple of humans as, as uh, over the ages. Um, and by and large, that keeps you full and active and hydrated and fiber. And you, you didn't eat cheeseburgers every single day, folks. That's just not how we evolved as humans. Um, they just weren't available. And besides, if we did, it'd probably kill us off much in the same way it's been doing for the last 150 years. Uh, the number one killer in the United States, going for over 100 years now strong, is heart disease. That is directly related to the fatty foods that you put in your mouth, period. That is what medical science and nutrition science shows. So the less fat you eat, the less fat you'll have around your body. That's it. Ah, easier said than done, doc. Yeah, well, okay, so this is why we're talking about it. And again, if you can eat the foods that are less calorie dense, the grains, the fruits, the vegetables, some select nuts, although those happen to be a lot higher in fat than most people think. Most people think those are protein. Well, no, most nuts are at least 60 to 75 percent fat. They're very high in fat. So you eat a small amount. They're very rich in minerals and vitamins, but a small amount. Easy does it. Okay. But going back to the rich in the high density foods, uh, those things really should be kept to a minimum. And really, if you start looking at things like the salty, heavy, fatty meats, those you should even contemplate getting rid of your your uh, from your diet. Um, we, the goal here is not to take away all of your comfort foods, but really for you to become a little bit more aware of what are the foods that are harming you. Uh, cheese, for the most part, folks, and I hate to disappoint you, is not a health food. Let me say that again. Cheese is not a health food. I don't care that they have it in cafeterias of the hospitals. <laughs> That's probably why they have it there. But the, the, this is not a food that you really want to put in your system. It is anywhere from 50 to 70 percent fat and one tiny little slice of cheese. Okay, and I don't care what kind it is, with the exception of maybe low-fat mozzarella, cheddar cheese, American cheese, Swiss cheese, Munster cheese, it's all around 100 to 110 calories per little slice. Who eats one slice of cheese? You're going to make a sandwich, you're going to put at least three or four slices of cheese on there, at least two. And well, there you go. Without even eating anything, you already have 200 plus calories in mostly fat. Put it on two slices of bread, another 200 calories. Put some mayonnaise and some some main part of the unless you're having a cheese sandwich, you put it on some kind of other you know meat or deli. You're looking at five six hundred calories in one sandwich, which is really not very big and filling, and it's coming from mostly fat. So that is the kind of thing that you got to look at and say, well, wait a minute, how can I do this different? Make a BLT without the B. Just make a sandwich that is rich. Go to Subway and get a a huge sub sandwich, and no, the fat, the bread won't make you fat. It's what you put on the fat. Get it low dressing, low oils. Put tons of vegetables on it, maybe a, a fat-free dressing on it, and go to town on that. You're going to be more full. It's going to give you more fiber, and it's going to give you less fat bite for bite than the cheesy, fatty, heavy foods. So when you start seeing these foods differently and you start filling up on the things that are less calorie dense, it's going to carry you a lot further. And you 
easily can lose weight just by eating those foods alone. Okay, have a great day. It's been five minutes.